try again, Revenant. Shut up! Your true destiny still awaits. <laughs> Who are you? So yeah, we get an old man laughing at me for dying violently and speaking ominously about my future. That's a good sign, right? For all I know, he's the one who chained me to my hell prison to begin with. You know what a good RPG would do? Make this one option. The other option will be for me to just slaughter every monster in the village because I'm a badass warrior king and I'm not about to take shit from a tribal looking goblin motherfucker. But that's not an option. So I re-grind my character so I can finally knock this purple people eater out. And I hit him so hard that physics no longer apply to me. Huh. Hey, yep. Yeah, go to sleep. This island has enough giants already. So here I am in the caves. It's a nice change of scenery. Very colorful. Little do I know, the pain is just beginning. If you've watched earlier episodes, you'll know I'm not a fan of mazes in an action game. Well, guess what the cave is. Now, it's not the worst maze I've seen by any means, but this just isn't what I wanted. I will say this probably is the most beautiful maze I've ever seen. Now you can criticize Diablo of having some maze-like levels, but Diablo gives you a good full-screen auto-map, and the enemies don't respawn, so it's easy to tell where you've been. I never had a hard time figuring out where I should go in Diablo, and it had randomly generated exits. Here, enemies respawn quickly, which only confuses me. Whoa, where did you come from? Also, my mini-map is busted thanks to graphics bugs. If I disable 3D acceleration, that fixes the bug, but I can barely zoom out at all. It's not much of an improvement. Plus, then I miss out on all the extra eye candy. I'm just in for some pain no matter what I do here. Unless you like infinite respawning enemies in a maze, in which case the caves are for you. The last time I played this game, I guess I had less self-respect than I do now, so I kept trudging through it, but I eventually gave up, doomed to die alone in the dark, lost in the caves. Not really the ending I wanted, but this was one problem I couldn't solve with the sword. Actually, there was more than one problem. This is as far as I got before I quit the last time. I stopped right here because I was noticing a grim trend. I was leveling up and getting some better gear, but the enemies were getting harder faster. A lot faster. Each encounter was turning into a life and death situation. Also, I was burning through food and health potions at a much faster rate than I was replenishing them. It didn't take much to do the math and realize this wasn't going to work for much longer. So, I stopped. Well, now that I've picked it up again, one thing I will say about Revenant is it has some great cheat codes. My favorite being kill enemies with one hit. Now, you may think that's cheap, but so is this game. Diablo didn't get this hard until the very end, and I'm only about a third of the way through. I'm pretty sure I could beat this game legitimately by abusing the save and load system, but is it really worth the extra 20 hours or however long that would take? Wait, what am I saying? This game has infinite enemy respawns. I don't have to justify anything. So on we go. Yeah, eat that, you wizard. I've got a sword and all you have is a stupid robe. The game started becoming much more fun at this point. This is actually a more realistic portrayal of what I think would happen if you went around bashing people with a sword. I mean, most of these people aren't wearing any armor. So I go through some mazes, and more mazes, and more mazes, and more- Okay, I'll spare you. I finally make it out. The main character should have a beard by this point, since that's about how long it took. And I get a cutscene. I'll just sum up my interpretation of what's happening while the great music keeps playing. You see a statue of a woman that triggers some memories. She was your bride from your past life, and it's implied later that she's been reincarnated as the king's daughter in this life. Essentially, it's the same romance plot as the movie Bram Stoker's Dracula, since they added some stuff that wasn't in the book. Except instead of a vampire, you're an ass-kicking revenant. Maybe the Catwoman would be Van Helsing? I don't know. There's actually not much character development at all in this game. It mostly feels like a bunch of throwaway NPCs. The story is interesting enough, but I wouldn't call it a strong point of the game. So this whole sequence I think is just a flashback to all the good times you had after not sacrificing your pride. Too bad it was just a fleeting moment compared to an eternity of being suspended above hell. The moral of this story is if you mess with the gods, they mess with you. 
Anyway, after the cutscene, the wizard appears, just to let you know he was screwing with you the whole time, and you could have taken a shortcut, but he didn't want you to. I can't say I'm surprised. This strikes me as the sort of thing he would do. But you could have just teleported me around the island. All those quests were meaningless. Pretty much. So I finally get to the eastern side of the island. It looks great, just like the west side. You keep going to the east, and guess what's next? Oh boy, a maze. My favorite. This whole section with the ruins is starting to piss me off. Because I discovered that I reached an impassable entrance where I have to disable the force field by collecting trinkets scattered all around the ruins. I thought I had everything, but it turns out some of them were scattered outside the entrance. So I had to run back all the way out and come back again, just to get a little more of my maze fix. This is really not improving my opinion of the game. I do like how it's reinforcing my decision to cheat, because it's not like this was one hard section, then the game gets fair. No, this would be another layer of hell. At least this area is a lot smaller than the caves, so there's not that much confusion, but we've clearly left the fun threshold behind at this point. I eventually make it inside and get some in-game cutscenes. It's your standard cheesy villain dialogue. Oh boy, I get to fight this new guy second in command. Oh, I guess I have to find him first. Okay. Oh, I guess I have to do it again. And again. And again. And again. And Jesus Christ game, what are we doing here? How about I just ignore this guy and go to the boss? I'm not sure I've ever seen a mini boss tease me this hard in a game before. I mean, he's the helper to the second in command. That's not a boss, that's a vice president's secretary. All he does is piss off the character and me. To top it off, he uses just about every cliched villain line you can think of. I could destroy you with the wave of my hand. Put an end to your pitiful existence. You truly have no idea what you're up against. Let me assure you that you will not leave this dungeon alive. So we meet again. There's nothing you are capable of doing about Your threats, however entertaining, are pathetic. This isn't over. Allow me to introduce you to a world of misery and suffering beyond your wildest You kneel before me at once, and I may spare your life. But after the problems you've caused, I have something a little more creative I've in mind. just about enough of this. Me too. They milk this way too hard. This game would have redeemed itself a lot if I could have just stabbed him dead in the middle of his third taunt. As for the rest of these levels, while the art direction is still great, having a whole bunch of dungeons right after dealing with the caves is really not what I wanted. And guess, just take a guess how I would describe the layout of these next few levels. Yeah, go ahead, guess. Yeah, that's right, it's another fucking maze. Now this maze isn't as intense as the cave, this one is more Doom style, where you find a locked door, then have to wander around to find the right key, then come back to the door, and repeat. Although even Doom had a leg up on this, because it had colored keys. I didn't have to fumble through my inventory of identical looking keys to find out which particular one is the one I need. And why do I have to drag the key to the door? Why can't it just open automatically once I have the key? Why put this in my inventory at all, so I can drop it again? Did they think this would help with the immersion or something? Speaking of which, if you listen closely, you can hear a chimpanzee sound when the dragons die. <laughs> now even though I'm cheating like a bastard, the game is still surprisingly challenging. Here I got jumped and you can see me panicking and hitting menu buttons by accident since I was frantically trying to hit buttons for health potions and food. Now, I was mashing attack buttons this whole time, but it didn't do anything since I was being overwhelmed. It reminds me of some fighting games where an opponent can get you caught in the corner and you're essentially helpless. This happened a few times. I thought this big guy was going to kill me for sure, but I managed to hang on. Now, I'm not saying my one-hit kill cheat is balanced, but I think the game and I have an understanding as to how cheap each of us is prepared to be. Oh, yeah, that looks fair. I should have dodged that. I did find it amusing that I got hit in the head by a block of ice while the character struck a pose after leveling up. Whoops. At one point, I loaded my game only to find that the helmet I was wearing had completely disappeared. I have no answers. 
I like how this area is called the City of the Children, yet there are no actual children in it. This doesn't look like the sort of place you should bring children. Now these quirks are fun, but eventually the game decides to start playing hardball with the mazes again. The mazes. I'm really starting to lose my shit here. I keep wandering around over and over. This maze has it all. Dead ends, multiple loopbacks, so if you go down one path, you're not always sure if you're in some place new. Identical patterns, so you don't have any reference points. And of course, a generous amount of map loading delays. This is killing me. After a while, I thought I was hallucinating, but no. Take a look at this. Look at the top of the screen. I can't decide if this is a bug, or if the game is inventing more of the maze for me as I go. I decide hell with this, and look up a walkthrough where to go next. Okay, I think I'm in the slave den, so I should go ch- So, that concludes the review of Revenant. Hardly a classic, but definitely a game worth mentioning in the history of hack and slashes. The thing about Revenant is- Alright, fine. I'll give you the rest of the story at least. Locke gets some powerful artifact necessary to kill the boss, but it starts turning him a little evil. Some retired guy in the forest tries to tell you something, but the wizard shows up and kills him because that's his thing. Then he kills the king because he's on a roll. I'm sure no one saw that coming. You don't really care because you're drunk on demon power. So you go and finally make it to the end boss. Grrr, scary. And you kill him and here's the ending. This is sort of like the outer space version of Sleeping Beauty. Uh... Hey, hero, I think you have the wrong idea. Ah, were her constraints made out of gummy worms? Look out! It's the knife! It was the villain this whole time! Oh, come on! Ten thousand years ago, you refused to perform the sacrifice. Now it no longer matters. The pact is restored. So what? Why do you even care so much? What is the point of any of this? You weren't alive 10,000 years ago. <laughs> Seriously, that's like being pissed about something somebody did in 8,000 BC. My beard! Yeah, so that's our ending. Boy, that really feels satisfying considering how the game built up the couple trying to be together across time. It's not that I can't handle a sad ending, but give it some meaning, huh? This is just wahaha, I'll kill you. Wah! I would expect this sort of thing from Wario with some goofy hijinks to go along with it. But instead we see a woman stabbed in the back and the hero heartbroken and it all feels unnecessary. I just don't know what to say. This game is not Macbeth. There's not some deep commentary on human existence here. Half the time, the writing felt like it was a Saturday morning cartoon. It probably won't be the last time, but I have to say Revenant has caused more intense mixed feelings for me than any other game on the show so far. It starts off really good and gradually ends up so tedious I couldn't finish it and maintains a great atmosphere the entire time. And to cap it off, we have one of the most callow yet nihilistic endings I've seen. What the hell? What was this game trying to do? It's not like there was one thing that held this game back. It feels this way by design. So many games nowadays are predictable or follow a standard formula. But this one feels like something that limped out of an alternate dimension where it should have been a great game, but decided to kill itself in front of me instead. Why? I'm sorry everyone, I don't know what happened here. I'll try better next time. Come back later for the special Halloween episode, which will be just as violent as last year. And have a better ending than this. Christ. Giant Scorpion! Oh...